everyone good morning good afternoon good evening depending on which part of the world you have joined us from and we are back again uh, pml chapter exchange season 4 event 2 the second uh, event of this year and i am priya patra the vice president outreach of pmi mumbai chapter again welcome thank you for joining there is a code on the chat window Take that menti poll and let us know from where you have joined in today. Today, we are going to talk on a very, very interesting topic, the silent trends, right? Quitting, hiring, and thriving. And I have with me my co-host, uh, Damike Mendes from PMI Sri Lanka chapter. Hi, everyone. I am Damike from uh, PMI Sri Lanka chapter. I'm the executive vice president uh, of the chapter. Thank you, Damike. And we have Greg from PMI Alaska chapter. Hi, hey, welcome. Greg Dubois, Alaska chapter. I'm the uh, uh, vice president of outreach and the youth and social impact coordinator. And it's about 6 a.m. here. So uh, good morning. <laughs> and Priscilla from PMI Sao Paulo, Brazil chapter. Hello, I'm Priscilla from PMI Sao Paulo chapter. I'm a governance council member. Welcome. Yeah, and it is what time, Priscilla, at your end? 11 a.m. Okay, great. So we have everyone um, from all parts of the globe joining us today. And over to you, Priscilla, to welcome everyone for this quite eventful session today. Okay, so welcome to PMI Chapter Exchange Season 4. Uh, event 1 today, we discuss the silent trends, quite quitting, hiring, and thriving. Today, we have our PMI friends joining in from 23 different PMI chapters from, all, from across the globe, North America, Latin America, Europe, Africa, and Asia, plus many more supporting chapters from the globe. Yeah, please say hello to each other, as we said, uh, and let us know from where you have joined in. Uh, we have around 1100 registrations from across 61 countries today. And you will see our PMI friends joining in from Alaska, New Zealand, and all countries and continents in between. So, yes, let us know from where you have joined in. And the code is there on your screen, menti.com. 72651431. This meeting has been recorded. If you are uncomfortable in any ways, you may choose not to attend. Yes, of course, you're welcome uh, to continue. And everyone in this event is talking or speaking on their individual capacity, including myself. Our views do not represent our organization's views in any ways. With this, I will welcome the guest speaker of the day, uh, Dr. Prasad. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Dr. Prasad. And Dr. Prasad does not need much introduction. He is a USA best-selling author, a multiple award-winning award -winning speaker, a management coach, PMO advisor, thought leader, inventor, you name it, entrepreneur, with 30 years of professional experience. And I met uh, Dr. Prasad in Las Vegas last December, and I was, I was quite amazed uh, by his personality, by his thought leadership. And that's why we decided to uh, invite him as a guest speaker today. Um, his career highlights, uh, you know, includes 50 countries spanning across six continents. Little like our chapter exchange initiative, isn't it? And uh, he has lectured in project management, leadership, innovation, and he's been like uh, recognized by everyone, I suppose, three times recognized by PMI uh, for the best of the best in project management. Uh, he's written 11 books, four patents. Wow. So put your hands together for Dr. Prasad. And Dr. Prasad, over to you to kickstart the event of the day. All right. I have some good news and I have some bad news about the three 
silent trends, quiet quitting, quiet hiring, and quiet thriving. Before I will reveal what they are, first, let me thank Priya Patra for that kind of introduction. Thank you, Priya. It was a pleasure to meet you in Vegas, of course, and it's good to see you right here in this uh, Webex conference room. Also, I would like to thank you for inviting me to speak here, plus thank you everybody for joining us for this exciting event. Uh, now, first, I wanna make sure that we are all on the same page. Let's set the stage. What are we talking about here when we talk about the three silent trends, quiet quitting, quiet hiring, and uh, quiet thriving? <clears throat> Start with quiet quitting. This phenomenon is about employees. It's about not being really interested in being there at work. You show up at eight o'clock in the morning and you check out at five o'clock. You don't take work from to, to, to home. You don't work extra hours. You don't work weekends. It is just barely doing the minimum you want to. You are not motivated. You are not engaged emotionally or mentally, although you are there physically. You produce the bare minimum needed. To be sure, quite kidding is not about quitting quietly as the term may wrongly suggest. You're still working for your employer. You are just coasting along until maybe they catch up with you and fire you or you find a better job or maybe you find something else to do. Next, what about quiet hiring? This trend is about employers. It's about organizations building talent in-house without hiring new people. It involves a lot of cross-training. They may have hired you for a one job role, but they may put you in another job role. They give you a little bit of a training, extra training. And basically they want you to learn a new skill. They want to build new talent and new capacity without hiring more people, which of course would cost them a lot. And lastly, what's quite thriving. This is again, back to employees. In a way, this is the employee's own cure for quite quitting. If you are feeling yourself disengaged, demotivated, stressed out, etc., etc., you make up your mind that you're not going to continue in this fashion and burn yourself out. You change your mindset and you say to yourself, I'm going to make a change. I'm going to figure out a way to reconnect, re-energize, reinvent myself, and I'm ultimately going to thrive. So that's quite thriving. Now, I haven't forgotten about the good news and the bad news that I promise you about these trends. So what's the good news? The good news is that it's old news, nothing really new. Seen it, done it, dealt with it. Have you ever seen this Hollywood hit movie, Office Space? The protagonist in the movie is a software engineer named Peter Gibbons, played by Ron Livingston, working for a company called Initech. His boss name is Bill Lumberg. So Peter is totally disengaged at work. He's not motivated. He wants to do the bare minimum. He just wants to get by. While the company is trying to cut costs through layoffs. So what does Initech do? They hire a couple of management consultants, Bob and Bob. So these consultants, Bob and Bob, is interviewing Peter about his job. And this is in an iconic scene. Some of you probably recall this. This is what Peter says to the consultants. It's not that I'm lazy, Bob. It is that I just don't care. It's a problem of motivation, all right? If I work my butt off and any tech ships a few more units, I don't see another dime. So where is the motivation? Here's something else, Bob. I have eight different bosses right now. That's right, 
eight different passes. So when I make a mistake, I have eight different people coming by to tell me what I did. So my only motivation is not to be hassled and the fear of losing my job. But you know, Bob, that will only make someone work just hard enough not to get fired. Wow, a classic case of quiet quitting. The movie came out in 1999, folks, almost 25 years ago. Hello, isn't that old news? That's my point. Stay with quiet hiring and quiet driving. The good thing about old news is that we have the tools. We tried. Some tools work, some tools don't work. We know what works and we know what doesn't work. And that is the good news. Then what about the bad news about the silent trends? The bad news is that the silent trends are happening at an unprecedented proportion. Folks, we have an excellent panel full of highly experienced project management professionals from around the globe that are going to discuss strategies and the solutions to manage these trends. But let me quickly offer you my own thoughts and my own strategies that you project managers can apply. My strategy simply is love. That's right, you have heard it, love. I'm not saying that you should love everybody. I'm not saying you should go to work and hug everybody, kiss everybody, tell everybody I love you. Oh, by the way, if you want to do it, go ahead and try it. But don't blame me if you get slapped on the face or get kicked in your rear. But what I'm really talking about here, folks, is the acronym L-O-V-E. Each letter stands for a particular competence that we all need to practice and to enhance. Let me start with the L. L stands for leadership. In this new environment, you need to be a leader, not just a manager. You are not just the project managers, you are project leaders. By the way, today, I'm bestowing upon you a new title, Chief Executive Officer. You are the CEO of your project. As the CEO, two important things to remember, communication and motivation. We know that the root cause of quite quitting is motivation or lack thereof. And the foundation for thriving, by the way, is motivation. So now you have another job title that is Chief Motivational Officer. Next, O. O stands for open-mindedness. In today's environment, we are working with people with multiple needs. Our teams are multidisciplinary, multifunctional, multinational, multicultural, multi-gender, multi, you pick a word, you pick the word. I call it the multi-X teams working in a multi-X world. Two things to remember here, folks, acceptance and respect for everybody. Next. V. V stands for value. We may have all kinds of differences. We come from different backgrounds, different cultures, and so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, our focus has got to be how we can deliver a value. And again, two things to remember here as far as delivering value. Value for the organization and as a project manager, you want to make sure that you show to your team members what the value the organization and your project, their project is generating for them. This is a value for the team member, value for the individual in terms of perhaps learning new skills, growth opportunities, and boosting the resume and so on. And lastly, E. E stands for empathy. Just imagine this scenario. Peter walks into a Starbucks cafe. Seven o'clock in the morning for a project meeting on a Monday. The boss 
asks him, hey, Peter, good morning. How are you? How was your weekend? And Peter says, boss, it was a terrible weekend. You know, my wife just told me that she's going to divorce me. She asked me to leave the house. I'm just devastated. I've been married for 10 years. I can't take this. And the boss says, well, Peter, I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry about this. I've been divorced twice myself. But hey, listen, uh, by the way, did you read that QPS report that I sent you last Friday? Is that empathy? Of course not. Folks, two things that we can practice. Be a good listener. Show interest, active interest, ask questions, and most important, be supportive. There you have it. Love, L for leadership, O for open-mindedness, V for value, and E for empathy. Ladies and gentlemen, let me conclude my comments with a quote by Oliver Wendell Holmes, a former justice of the United States. He said famously, there are three kinds of people in this world. Number one, those that make things happen. Number two, those that watch things as they're happening. And number three, those that go, hey, what happened? You, project managers and the project team members make things happen. And thank you for making this event happen. And thanks to PMI Exchange Chapter for making this event happen. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. So that was a message from Dr. Prasad with love. That is L for leadership, O for open minders, V for value, and E for empathy. Did I get that right, Dr. Prasad? All right. Okay. So now. Yes, you did. <laughs> thank you very much for that interesting and exciting message. You really made that quite interesting, I would say. And now just a little bit about our initiatives. And we stole this from uh, our ex-CEO, uh, Sunil Prasara, one team, song and dance. And that is what we are. Uh, we are, uh, we call this as chapter exchange initiatives. And there are around 23 chapters who are there today across all 16 regions that PMI is in today. And uh, it's nothing uh, great, but it is, uh, I know everyone knows about this, uh, uh, this principle. It is about uh, collaboration. It is about building a virtual community of chapter leaders, a community which we say transcends countries, continents, and cultures. We like to put it this way. And our vision is to evangelize uh, cross-chapter collaboration and encourage cultural diversity. And uh, we would like to put a spotlight on something that we publish every month, apart from this event, and we call that as Insight Exchange Nugget. Now, this is a post-event knowledge nugget. Now, many people cannot join us, be it be because of the time difference or be it because of their work pressure, but this, um, this post-event knowledge nugget will give you insight into what that event was all about. So as you know, we always take a trending topic and we deliberate on it. And we call this, that is providing an insight into the event, that is the insight. And exchanges align to our thin theme of exchanging ideas, viewpoints from all across the globe, from across continents, and no one has time to read a big article or a big novel, right? So that's why we kept this very small. And this is a bite-sized nugget. And uh, the reading time is 10 minutes or less. So even if you are, you know, taking a walk or, you know, going, uh, going to work, uh, not while driving, of course, you can read this and you can have insights into the event that we concluded. And uh, you will see an Insight Exchange Nugget, which will be published next, by next Friday on this event. And um, the, to know more about such exciting insights and, uh, you know, how we build this community, we even published a book. And that's called The Exchange Effect. 
and you will have the link on the chat window on how to get this book or if you want to read this book you can reach out to us we can uh, share the details more details mm -hmm. about this book so the mickey and priscilla if you can add the link on the chat window that will really help and with this uh, we will move on to the spotlight chapter of the month uh, which is pmi sao paulo brazil and i hand over the stage to the mickey to introduce the president of this chapter, Monica. Hello, everybody. Thank you for the invitation to present PMI São Paulo at today's event. I'm Monica Mancini, president of the São Paulo chapter. Brazil is among the 10 largest economies in the world and the sixth largest country in terms of population. PMI São Paulo is headquartered in São Paulo, capital of the state of São Paulo, a Brazilian state of strategic economic. It was founded in 1998, uh, being the first PMI Brazilian chapter. It's currently the largest chapter in Latin America and the first largest chapter in the world in number of members, with almost 5,000 members. It was 14 branches distributed of the state of São Paulo. Its International Project Management Seminar in uh, 2022 bring together more than a thousand people in person. It's the first Brazilian chapter to receive the ATP, promote uh, uh, courses, events, and mentoring programs. In 1922, PMI São Paulo received recognition for PMI Latam, being nominated for three categories, having been a finance grow and winner in the partnerships categories with the military policy project and the social impact category with the social language project. PMI São Paulo is very honored to participate in this event participate in the promotion of these events and the data analysis. We strongly believe in this potential for transformation on a global level. We are open to exchange experience for the development of the project management community. I wish you an excellent event. Thank you very much. Thank you, Monica. Um, I had to ask you two questions, right? What is the time um, at your end today, right now? Yes. Yeah, so what is the time? I, I think Priscilla uh, already told us. Today is March 7, uh, 17, Friday, it's uh, uh, 11 a.m. 11 a.m., I think. Yeah, yeah in Brazil, yeah. Brazil time. Right. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so when we look at the... Uh, look at the logo of your chapter, right? And I will share my screen again so that people can have a look at it. Uh, what does this signify? Ah, PMI São Paulo logo represents a famous bridge of São Paulo City called Octavio Frias Oliveira, also known as Ponte Estaiada. It's a cable stayed bridge of the Pinheiros River. Oh, okay. So great. Thank you very much, Monica, for introducing us to your country, to your chapter. And we have a slide on the beautiful places that we uh, see in, uh, we, we can see and we can visit if we are in Sao Paulo someday. And these are those beautiful pictures and the famous carnival as well. Isn't that so? Yes, it okay. is the beautiful country. Yeah, thank you very much. And with this, we will move on to the next section, uh, which is introducing the moderator of the day. Um, uh, the topic, as you already know, it is silent trends, white quitting, hiding and thriving. And Christopher Geminis is the moderator uh, of this panel discussion. He is a senior operations manager for Fire Island Wind Project at Cook Inland Region, INC, Alaska. He is responsible for managing project assets, including utility scale, wind turbines, island facility operations, energy collection systems. 
uh, looks like you're in the energy and utilities domain, which is kind of, uh, you know, shielded from the recession that we are going through as of now. So that's good for you, Christopher. He previously worked for DRS Technologies as a project manager, overseeing the installation of 500 miles of microwave communications network in the Alaskan interior. And a few minutes back, we were asking um, uh, Christopher whether he can see Northern Lights or not. And he said, yes, this year, a couple of days back, he could see them even in the city of Alaska. And in addition to that, he retired from 21 years serving as a civil engineer and academy instructor in the US Air Force. Uh, Christopher holds a Bachelor of Science in Industrial Technology from Southern Illinois University and a Master's Certificate in Project Management from Villanova University and ITIL certifications. So Christopher, over to you to take us through this wonderful panel discussion. Thank you, Priya. I appreciate that wonderful introduction and thank you, Dr. Prasad. What a wonderful message and especially with my new title upgrade to CEO, I will make sure my company knows about that. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate everybody joining from around the world. This is my first event and wow, uh, just the outreach and collaboration from everybody in all sorts of cultures. I am, as moderator, it's my job to introduce our panelists, and I will start with Melis Abashioglu, and I will let her introduce herself. Thank you. Thank you. That was a great attempt at my last name. So my name is Melis Abashioglu, as you said, and I'm the founder of WellBees. It's an employee well-being platform. Today, I am here as a courtesy of the um, Turkish PMI, and uh, I'm joining in from Istanbul, Turkey, and it's... Um, uh, a mere 5.30 p.m. here, uh, which is not too bad, I would say, compared to the 11s and 6 a.m.s I've just heard. So, yes, Christopher, that's a little bit about me, and I'm here actually to share, you, share with you a little bit about the research that we have done with PwC on the quiet trends. Um, it's not called the quiet trends report. It's um, merely called the S in ESG's report, but we have a section on um, the quiet trends, and I'm really excited to join and uh, to share those with you. Wonderful. I look forward to hearing about those. Thank you. And I will move on to Maria Katia Sanchez from France. Hello. <clears throat> Can you hear me now? I, yes. I think I was muted. Great. Thank you, Christophe, and, and yes, this is Maria Katia Sanchez. Uh, I'm currently based in France, but today, these days, I am in Lima, Peru, so I'm very, very lucky. It's 9.30 a.m. here, summer. I am the only one wearing summer clothes, I think, in this <laughs> panel. So uh, a little uh, words about me. Um, so I was born in Lima, Peru. I consider myself as a global citizen because I have lived in different parts of the world for the last uh, 20 years. Uh, Melis, I was in <clears throat> living in Turkey for seven years. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you are here sharing uh, this panel. Uh, I am professor at Exxon University in Peru, and I am an international human resources uh, leader, having worked for 30 years, a little bit more of 30 years in leading human resources teams, managing human capital at, at global level, at regional and country levels in different industries, in the private sector, and also in international organizations as the UN and the European Union. Um, and uh, well, I'm here also to share some experience that I have uh, uh, managing project management community at a global level in different companies I work for. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I think it's important that we get an HR perspective as opposed to just seeing uh, project management. So I think we are all employees at some extent in our lives, but it's nice to have a specialist in the HR world. Thank you. Uh, our next panelist is Abdul Salim. If you could please introduce yourself. Sure, uh, Christopher. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, uh, depends on the parts of the world you are joining it. I'm from United Arab Emirates, uh, working as an IT project manager. 
more than uh, 10 years in the field of IT projects, so infrastructure, applications, and new age technologies. So I can uh, deliver some experiences from the field what currently going through in terms of uh, the quite uh, quitting, hiring, and thriving. Uh, to consider the matter of time, from the introduction, I'll do a quiet quitting, so we can utilize more time for the other productive information. Over to you, Craig. Christopher. Thank you very much. I would like to uh, follow up next with Shahab Al Yamin Shaudi. Shadhari. Chris, I can hear you now. Yeah. So. Uh, greetings from Dhaka chapter uh, from Bangladesh. So approximately it's 8.30 p.m. right now. Uh, from my part, I'm actually uh, an enterprise architect, uh, still learning my trade and going up to the ladder as well. Being an architect, that means uh, my deployments and projects are related to application development infrastructure and network development, and definitely since uh, both things are actually covered. So essentially, uh, the role was taken uh, approximately four to five years back. And since then, I'm working on the uh, CISO part. So infrastructure security, application security, and everything that comes with the trade actually. So welcome, uh, stay tuned for more as well. Thank you. Back to you, Chris. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, all our panelists, I, take, I thank you so much for taking the time to join us in this and sharing of knowledge and understanding of why these trends happen. And Dr. Prasad is, is also going to be joining us in our panelists of questions. And if uh, we don't have any other thing on the agenda, I'd like to go into the to the questions that we have uh, already prepared. Priya, is that okay? That's okay. Okay, thank you. So I'm gonna start with Maria Katia. Uh, the first question is career cushioning. It's a way to describe the tactic of developing a plan B scenario in case of layoffs. Would you like to address that? Yes, thank you, Chris. Uh, well, first of all, maybe I would like to to, to talk about um, the quiet quitting. So uh, I think that uh, the key element here is prevention for managers, for project leaders, and identification of the root causes uh, prevent the quiet quitting. But well, maybe we will talk uh, this uh, later. So um, my comments about the career questioning is that every, um, as Dr. Prasad said, everyone should be the CEO of uh, our career. It means that the key element is to become, to, come, to remain employable, is uh, to be all the time updated uh, uh, abreast of the latest trends in your area uh, to identify what are your transferable skills uh, to explore the industry and to keep networking. There is a phrase that I like very much, networking is working. So this is something that we need to do on a permanent basis. And um, so uh, there is also a, a concept that I, I use uh, a lot uh, that is uh, the no mat is no the knowledge and 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 no mat. So it's, uh, we are all uh, here to be uh, eager to learn uh, all the time and and keep ourselves employable. So my my, my I have a course in the sun that is called the personal branding and there is a chapter about employability is how we remain uh, uh, relevant in the market on a day-to-day -day basis and how we can, based on this, decide our uh, career project in a, in a more strategic way. 
be becoming the CEO of our career. So this is the message I would like to, to give. Thank you. As I've seen in uh, my experience, even in the different industries I've worked with, going all the way back into the military, even though they couldn't be fired, it was a matter of what's next and the concern about moving on to another uh, station or another area just to get out of the office that they were in because of the stresses and the struggles that they had in there. So it's not always just about quitting, it's about trying to, to move to somewhere else where you, you don't have that fear anymore. And you have to look into the people that have those plan Bs set up. That's something that we all try to get away from. Thank you very much for sharing the insight. And we will come back to uh, addressing the root causes here in just a minute. I'm going to go to Shahab. And uh, the question for you, sir, is how can one make a transition from quiet quitting to quiet thriving? So what, uh, what we do as a project manager, right? So in an environment or in a company, or you're actually working for other companies uh, for hire or something like that, what we do um, on a daily basis that we manage all the stakeholders, right? So in that part, uh, it, it, it never actually occurs that you can manage everyone or you can make happy uh, about everything to everyone, right? It's actually impossible. So uh, if you if you go for like, uh, oh, someone, is, he's not sharing those information with me or it's not my job or not uh, my part of, the, uh, uh, it's not my uh, cake as well. So what, what it actually ha what actually happens that it actually puts uh, your mind into pressure, right? So when you're in a working environment, you have multiple types of people, uh, as Dr. Prasad said, that all these stakeholder management, what we do in every engagement is that we take something from them on how they work and how they're actually uh, flourishing, how they're reporting those things, and why I am actually unable to do the same thing, uh, to reach the same heights or aptitude on every projects, on every presentations and things of this sort. So in most cases, we are not listening to all those uh, all those things that people actually addresses. Uh, what are the things that matters to them? So. There are some things that we already uh, need to do uh, to communicate better. Say, uh, if we need something, uh, need some tools uh, to help out with some projects or need someone's help uh, who uh, is actually great at doing some specific tasks. So all those items, so uh, actually takes into considerations and so that so you get to engage with that person, uh, understand why his values and his opinions are actually getting addressed, why you are not. Uh, so what it actually does to you, so you get to understand and you get the understanding that, okay, these are the things that I need to do in a better way. Uh, suppose like, so, Primarily, first thing that comes into say I, my, my my mind that okay, these guys are not robots, right? They're practical human beings. They have their own problems. I have my own problems, and I go through these things uh, on a daily basis. And say, so doing my job, I need those things uh, um, delivered, and we need to. What I do is I communicate in a different uh, different methods as well in emails, uh, in uh, messaging systems. Uh, what it does to you, it keeps a transparent um, transparent mode on all of your tasks, so that when you put all those things uh, and you make extra effort to show them, okay, these are the things I have done uh, properly, and these are the things that needs uh, needs to go through, and and you run it by your uh, line manager or someone like 
uh, or someone who could be an added value to you. So what it does to you at the end of the day that you will be expanding your capacity. So like anything. So what it does at the end of the day, you won't feel like you won't be or you will never be bogged down that, oh, I didn't do these things. So why didn't you? No one is actually stopping you to gain knowledge, right? No one is going to beat you for it. So at the end of the day, it's you and you only that if you say that, okay, I need uh, raise your hand. I need help with these things. I need some tools to help with these things. I need someone who could help me out uh, with some project management uh, topics or something like that. So in that perspective, you reduce your, uh, uh, how do you put it? So you reduce the domain uh, that understands your line manager would be actually looking into that. Okay, this guy is growing faster than other guys, so you will be get getting noticed, and definitely. Uh, so you went, you will, uh, you will actually adhere to all the new processes, new frameworks, new way of working, uh, adhering to uh, what the what are the timelines that actually given to you. So when you're meeting those things or a close line that you're meeting at least say 80% uh, of those timelines. So you will get understand, get the understanding that, okay, I need to do more and uh, do things in a faster way. So that when you put those things into a paper or something like that, that would actually help you out. Okay. These are the checklists I've made out uh, for these things. Some other things as well. So evidently. It will lead you, lead you to uh, you are uh, expanding your capabilities. So definitely that will be addressed and you won't be in the line of people that they who, who uh, feel that they're completely disengaged uh, from the team, from the office, from the work that needs to be done. So these things, uh, I mean, we are also uh, working uh, to earn money, right? So we have some KPIs, some KRAs delivered that needs to be delivered and that will be measured against our activities, right? So those things, uh, if those things are lined up properly, planned properly, so since you're doing the whole thing by yourself, getting help and you take uh, all the capabilities that someone is doing in a better way, you do it yourself as well. So definitely going back to Dr. Prasad's empathy. So feel that we are definitely not robots. Everyone has their own problems, address that. Um, so be a better human being as well. So that will put you in a place that no one can actually pull you down. So back to you, Chris. Thank you very much for that. I like the perspective that uh, applying Dr. Prasad's love to yourself, so self-love as opposed to, as in addition to love of the people that you are in charge of, uh, making sure you take that extra effort and take that initiative that will pull you out of that quiet quitting, that, that stress mm -hmm. and absolutely, making, absolutely making the change inside of your own environment. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. Sure. Um, Melis, I would like to switch to you. And the question yes, is, sir. which project management models and methods could you could help the project manager to avoid quite quitting? So um, what we're, like I mentioned in the beginning of this call that we run an employee well-being platform and uh, we yeah. do um, we do measure the trends that are happening uh, with employees daily. So it's not like um, one of those platforms that you see maybe bi-monthly or like bi-yearly results. We see those literally daily. And we've just run a huge survey with PwC in five different countries. And what we've seen is very interesting. Like the past five years, we've been doing this uh, employee well-being survey it's the first year we've seen that there's no, at least for half of the P 
people that we've surveyed, there's no connection between how good a person is feeling and how engaged they are. This is literally showing um, the quiet quitting for us. It's, um, I would say it's the data version of quiet quitting for us. Uh, to be honest with you, up until I saw those results, I was like, Christopher, come on now. Like, <laughs> like those are headlines. Don't give me those. Like, we've heard those so many times. There are no trends like that. But no, there are actually, like, this is really happening right now. And the way we're reading this is that, like, there's some, um, literally, there's dust in the air after um, work has been shuffled during COVID, right? Like, our values have changed, the way we look at work has changed, work itself has changed, is trying to catch up, is trying to do, try new things. But we, the, the easy answer is, Christopher, to your question, there's no easy answer <laughs> right now. <laughs> I'm sorry to be that blunt, like literally, like right now, um, there's no one single bulletproof like uh, thing that I could tell you, like this will work, do this, definitely, no. Uh, but well, what I can very confidently tell you is that quiet quitting is real. Um, I'll, I can also tell you what companies are doing um, in terms of turning that on its head and what's really helping. And almost all of the panelists have said this before, but um, it will be very human again. It will be not very project-based, but um, they're doing the, their one-on-ones. They're understanding the problems. They're trying to see if it's an individual thing or a group thing. Is it, are the, like only like specific individuals having this? Or are there groups having this? Are there like um, overlapping problems that we're seeing here? So what I'm seeing is that there are some companies with exceptional managers and managers play such a huge role in this course, Christopher. Like I will, I'm a math major, if you couldn't tell. Um, we, we went back to our numbers and we looked, we checked our numbers and what we saw was exceptional, you know? This year, like like in the last couple of years, it was very similar. But this year, we're seeing the manager's mood, the manager's sentiment is only 5% different from their teams. They have this symbiotic relationship. So the way you feel, the way you, you engage your work, the way um, that you're feeling is literally... Um, it is caught on by your team and you have this unfortunately or fortunately very symbiotic relationship so it really starts with you and then it's uh, it's passed on to your team what we're seeing here is um, a, a set of questions i would say that people are asking their teams over and over trying to see if there's an overlap and if there's an overlap trying to build solutions around it and the solutions um, can be as simple as removing some meetings or as complicated as like, how do we build purpose around the work that we're doing because it doesn't exist right now. So I, I hope it was as confusing as enough <laughs> of an answer for you, Christopher, to start with, but let's start with this and see where it goes. I appreciate that. And I think you're right, as project managers, we're looking for a, a scope statement on how to solve or deal with these issues. And there's no real instructions. Um, I think it comes from an environment of trying to do some group dynamics and team development and for people that are placed in positions that may have a technical expertise background in what they're trying to do, they may lack the, and the tools to be able to deal with interpersonal skills. And I think it's important, like you said, to move and to, to get out there and talk to people and find out what's going on. I appreciate your insight. Thank you Thank so you. much. Um, I encourage everybody that's listening to please uh, provide your own questions if you have anything for our panelists. Um, we do have a list, a queue of questions here uh, to keep the conversation going, but I would love to hear uh, anything from around the world and see what your thoughts are or questions. Thank you. Um, Dr. Prasad, I'd like to switch to you. Um, what about quiet firing as opposed <laughs> to, the, to the three? Can you tell us about that? What? Quite fine. That is also considered to be a latest trend, but actually it's been around for a while. I remember when I was uh, actually 
teaching a class at a corporation that then the class, there was a woman outside my class. In fact, she was in my class all day. She was literally crying. I said, what's the matter? And she said she was just told to voicemail that she just lost a job. This was as she was going through this training. It was a project management training class, as a matter of fact. My point here is this quiet, uh, what, firing that you're talking about? It's been around in, in a way. So I go back to what um, the previous panelists, particularly Maria Caria mentioned. It's about career cushioning. Career cushioning. I have a plan B. Always have a plan B. Again, I would like to share my own experience. I went through, as a matter of fact, quite quitting. So when I was going through this process of quite quitting, I realized this is not the way I want to live because it was stressing me out. I was reaching this state of burnout. And I said, no, I need to change my mindset. There is a phrase that they use in psychology. It's called cognitive reappraisal. It is cognitive reappraisal. That's the first thing you need to go through. Even if, even when the situation is bad, you look at what are the good things? How can I change my mindset? And then that's a first step. And then you look at proactively, what are the things that I can do to thrive in this organization? Go talk to your boss, ask, tell them that uh, you are not particularly enjoying the project that you're working on. Volunteer for another project. Volunteer to be put on a different team or what have you. So get to the next stage that is thriving. And then while you're doing this, also have a plan B career cushioning, and I'll share this thing, one last thing. When I went from quite quitting to quite thriving, one day my boss and my boss's boss came into my office. This was my last corporate job that I ever had before I started my own company. Closed the door behind them, I knew what was gonna happen. They fired me. And then you know what I said? You will not believe I said two words. Thank you. And I had a big smile on my face. You wouldn't be, you would be really, really surprised. That's what I did. You know why? Because I already had plan B, career cushioning. And that was, I wanted to start my own company. And that's what I did. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that insight. I experienced the same thing uh, in a previous job where it was more of a threat. And I was to the point where I knew my value and the um, our director came down and he said, we're gonna have to let you, he gave me an option. He said, we're either let, gonna let you go or you're gonna have to take a um, a lower position. And I said, I'm, I'm good with you letting me go. And he goes, well, well, hold on. I didn't expect you to answer so fast. And he was trying to use that as a power position and I, it was infuriating to me. And yeah, I had to move on from from short from that position uh, just because of that. So thank you so much for sharing that insight on that. Um, I'm gonna go to Abdul next, and then we're gonna start with uh, with one more question, and then we're gonna open it to all the panelists with the, the questions that are pouring in. Thank you so much for responding to that. Uh, Abdul, let's see, uh, are there challenges related to quiet quitting and quiet hiring in virtual teams? Yeah, uh, hi, Christopher. Okay, as uh, Dr. Prasad has mentioned that when you are a CEO or the leader, the main role is to look after the people, not look after the job or the task. So what, what often has uh, happened is, or especially after the pandemic, the virtual team level is increased like anything. We have so many virtual team, dif different geographies, even in the uh, same uh, country even the virtual workers uh, uh, increase like so much so even uh, the people attending the meeting we don't know whether they actually participating and not participating it so there is no uh, uh, the physical uh, presence of it, it so it's only uh, whether they are attending or uh, giving uh, or understanding anything so the emotions so making their participation is really challenging it. So uh, often what will happen is uh, 
uh, as a uh, ma management side of air people try to take it in in a way like uh, fig uh, try to dictate things okay so uh, we we don't um, give the proper openness or opportunity for everyone to talk listen very uh, carefully i mean it's, it's active listening very very active listening is required for it uh we the, the engagement level is literally re reduced it so we need to really bring each member and make it a one to one connection have the more active participation in all the levels unless we are not taking in that the quite getting will increase it especially uh, this uh, work from home or work near home all of this started coming in to uh, there are a uh, lot of silos is built across it uh, the the we, we we try to impose solutions and just give it that and just go on so uh, sometimes we, we we only do the, we, we prepare a uh, list of actions and just push into that Uh, especially the virtualized environment we think that yeah they understood it they have taken it uh, uh, proper and uh, they they are following it no uh, from there we, we need to literally change it uh, the the level of like uh, uh, as um, dr prasad has mentioned the uh, the love we need to we need to start adopting it okay so uh, what 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 we taken is more into uh, connect each one of them then, then let have very uh, active participation and active listening each segment of it and take into consideration of each one of their voices the voices has to be heard properly and as well we, we need to give it uh, clarity in terms of like what is in it for me so uh, we we need to be in a position to clarify that each individual what is in it for me unless we are not able to give it that uh, what is in it we will not be able to make them motivated and involved into it uh, otherwise the, this trend of it uh, really really increase as dr prasad has mentioned as the quiet quitting and thriving is there sometime in the um, uh, industry but more uh, knowingly people started following it now this is the one change especially after uh, the pandemic or recent years is coming up earlier it was just yeah it is it was happening in the more unknowing way but now it is very knowingly people is taking that yes uh, if i don't have or if I, i don't have anything in it then better i'll start moving out from there or if i am getting more participated getting involved in or i am part of the journey then yes i'll i'll put my extra um, uh, effort into it work on it so it's a, uh, as a le leadership role uh, there are lot to work on it and uh, more knowledgeable in terms of the new technologies to get engaged to get the uh, uh, the emotions of the people uh, so really need to address it in that uh, then uh, it's not just uh, pushing into the the jobs and getting done no that will not work so the the trend will definitely increase more unless we are not taking care of the people uh, over to you uh, krishna a question you. may I add yes sir yes um uh Abdul Salim was particularly talking about what is in it for me and we are all looking for what is it for me so as a project manager as a project leader as i mentioned part of the value part of the value we need to show to our team members what is the value that our project and our organization is offering to that person and then i see in the chat some question about uh, purpose so what is the purpose of this project i think people and maybe not everybody a lot of people get motivated by knowing the purpose of the project of course we like our paycheck we like our uh, benefits and so on and so forth but what about purpose i talk about this little story 
about a bunch of people looking into their microscopes, counting cultures. So you ask one person, what is your job? And this person says, I'm counting cultures. And you ask another person, that person says, I'm curing COVID. So what's your job? If you think your job is simply counting cultures, then you have a different perspective. It's just a eight to five job. But if you think about the purpose, I am curing COVID, it gives you a different perspective. As project leaders, we need to give everybody that perspective, that purpose. We are not counting cultures. We are curing COVID. Thank you very much for adding to that and getting some clarity. It's uh, it is it's about being engaged. It's about purpose, and feel, and giving your employees the feeling that they're contributing something to the overall project. And I think that that's a big step in helping prevent the quiet quitting. Okay, I'm going to open this question to all the panelists. This is the, the very first one that came in. Uh, so whoever wants to take it, feel free. What is the difference between upskilling and quiet hiring? Anybody like to take that one? What's the difference between the two? Between upskilling and quiet hiring, and they go on to say upskilling, et cetera, is enabling staff with skills to be more effective and more efficient. What is there a gap between the two uh, and how do they relate to each other? I'll tell you what we're seeing from our research. So um, I'll go ahead and start the conversation. Maybe the panelists can add a little bit to it. So what we're seeing is, uh, again, I mentioned this like PwC report that we've done. And what we're seeing is that um, very interestingly, um, upskilling, like learning new things, um, trainings make the most impact this year, specifically on people's engagement to their companies. So, yes, like, I would say the definition is a little bit different for quiet hiring. Uh, quiet hiring, I believe, also involves not just reskilling, but also like giving people new responsibilities, like new maybe levels of, um, yeah, new levels of responsibilities as well. So, I would say it's uh, one subset of that whole definition, but I believe it's a big part of it and it will definitely, um, by the way, for those who have done the quiet quitting, it will really help if you would actually go back and ask if there is anything you would like to learn, any new challenge you would like to get, because it seems to be a huge engagement factor uh, when it comes to employee engagement, uh, to, according to our uh, latest research. Yes. And I would like to 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 complement also uh, on this. So I fully agree with with Melly. Uh, providing opportunities for growth, upskilling, reskilling, professional evolution, development, and career advancement is is is, is really key for engagement. Uh, in my experience, what I have seen in in project management a population is that. Uh, when this aspect of the uh, of the career advancement is not there, they prefer to move to the uh, managerial career path. So uh, I have a, a, in two companies I, I had the opportunity to work on a dedicated career path and career progression and 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 um, giving opportunities of training and skilling to the project management community to build a new career path in terms of project management A, B, C, D, et cetera. So this is just to complement what Melis was uh, saying. Right. Uh, Chris, if I may add. Chris? I think he might be having a problem. Yes. Yeah, go ahead, Dr. Prasad. Okay, now, Reskilling is actually acquiring a new set of skills altogether. And then upskilling is within your own domain, you're trying to learn how to do your job better. 
for example, let's say you're a project manager and uh, you are in a waterfall environment and uh, you want to learn more about, uh, about Agile. So if you're taking more courses, you're getting more training in other models, then that would be upskilling. Reskilling means, let's say, altogether, you are not in project management. Maybe they train you to become a an operations manager. So that's reskilling. And now, what about um, the the quiet hiring? Quiet hiring, in my opinion, embraces both upskilling and reskilling. So those are the differences from from uh, what I can tell. Yep. Uh, by the way, there are so many terms that are being thrown at, us, thrown at us these days, and it's very confusing. Uh, I've been around for a long time, 30 some years. I've seen this all in one fashion, uh, one fashion or another. Sometimes it's uh, really frustrating, and yet other sometimes to me is amusing. <laughs> to have these buzzwords, I agree. <laughs> It's something you, people just like to put labels on things. Um, I would like to know, and uh, there's a panelist that asked, what does aging, how does aging affect uh, this, these transitions and, and what's happening in this world? If anybody would like to take that. Do you reframe the question? Did you just say what does age uh, have what? anything to do with it? What does aging, or how does aging affect quite all of the silent trends? Can I maybe take a shot at it? Sure. There's no wrong so answer. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure where exactly this person is coming from when they ask this question about aging. The, the way I'm interpreting that question is maybe it is about uh, the, the 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 uh, boomer, the boomer generation, as they're aging. What kind of uh, challenges they're posing? So maybe that's what they're thinking about. But let, let me let me let me point out um, at the workplace today there is this tension, if you will, between the boomers and also the, the earlier generation, we call what the great generation folks, just a few of them, and the zillennials, generation Z. And they have different opinions, they have different interests, they have different needs. So I think what really needs to happen is we need to look at what can we learn from each other? And then I tell you, I work with a lot of young people. I, I the work, young people work for me, and then I do mentoring and coaching in universities and so forth. So I'm a boomer, and my interest in working with the younger people is I can learn a lot about technology. Being a boomer, it takes forever for me to learn something new. So I like to learn from the younger people. And younger people at the same time, they should be learning from the older people their wisdom. There's so much wisdom that the older generations have and they can learn. And then I, by the way, I'm not a movie buff, but there is a movie called Intern. Some of you probably watched it with Robert Redford. So Robert, Red, I'm, I'm sorry, Robert De Niro. So Robert De Niro, after he retires from his work, he starts as an intern in an organization that was a startup, working for the chief executive of the startup. And it's, a, it's a really a, a great story in terms of what different generations can learn from each other. I agree that okay. the age gap. Oh, go ahead. Yes. Uh, I would like just to, to, to compliment on this. We, uh, in, in a company I work for, uh, we started working on a reverse mentoring and uh, it works very, very well. So it's, it's as, as Dr. President said, uh, it's teaching as 
about the new technologies and the new, uh, yes, the new technology mainly. But it was very, very effective and everybody really enrolled on this reverse mentor. I'm and glad I, you, yeah, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Christopher, sorry. I wanted to uh, touch on, since Maria Katia spoke up, uh, maybe there's a communications barrier. And the other question that she addressed in the beginning wanted to, uh, she wanted to address was about the root causes in quiet quitting. Is, is that a contributing factor uh, the age barrier where the, we can't, uh, you know, as a boomer or uh, older, uh, being able to communicate with the younger Gen Z generation. That, that was a statement, right? That wasn't the question. That was, um, well, I wanted Maria Katia to, she wanted to address this earlier today when right. we first started about the root causes. And I wanted to tie it into communications barriers as well. So if she can address those. Yes, and I am checking. Now I, I see some questions that we have in the in the Q and A. Uh, how does uh, one manage and motivate a team when one or more members quietly quits? So maybe what I wanted to just to to, to summarize a little bit about about it is that um, so the the quiet quitting can be a a, a a significant problem for for project leaders and for the organization as a whole because it can lead to uh, the loss of uh, valuable talent and uh, institutional knowledge. Uh, it might affect the mental health of uh, and well-being of the employees and cause a negative impact on the team morale and uh, also have an impact on the organization's reputation uh, and, and consequently affect the organization's overall performance. So it, it might affect the attracting and retaining talent. And what I was saying at the beginning is the key element here is prevention and identification of the root causes, what leaders can do to address to prevent the root causes of quiet quitting. And, and, and in my analysis is building a culture of open communication. I'm talking about the prevention, uh, creating some, a, a concept that is also a very trendy nowadays that is the psychological safety work environment where people feel uh, comfortable um, speaking up and also uh, uh, not being afraid of, 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 of making mistakes. The second point is uh, because we all are different uh, leaders, good leaders should identify each and every team member's individual needs. We all have different needs in terms of flexibility, in terms of kind of, of jobs that we were, we feel comfortable um, working on. Uh, then uh, third point for me is very important to for leaders to conduct regular feedback sessions, checking uh, meetings to identify any issues uh, or concerns that employees may have before it becomes a, a, a huge uh, problem. And something that has been already uh, discussed uh, is to address the stress, uh, the frustration, and the potential burnout, provide uh, mental health and self-care resources. So we all have been experienced this uh, during the pandemic. And uh, the, the project management population, uh, in my experience, because I manage this population uh, globally, uh, I can see that is a population that experience a lot of frustration because of the delays or because of the yes not meeting the, the deadlines so we need to address this uh, and provide the the the, the self-care resources and what i mentioned before provide these opportunities for growing advanced career and um, and also identify the right means of recognition and reward mechanisms so this is a, in general what I consider are the the key elements. Also, I have another one that is um, be sure to provide the resources they need to succeed. Either it is uh, tools, training, or support from top management. Uh, in one of the meetings I had with with a, a group of uh, project managers, uh, one of the key reasons for Quitting was that when when they are losing the most precious things like health, 
uh, or time with family. Uh, and it's compared to the, uh, this is the sacrifice I'm doing, but it is not compensated by the support I have from my manager or the, the, the resources I am give, I have uh, received. So then you do your analysis and you said, okay, this is not worth for me. So the, the, the price is too high. And uh, also empowering uh, team members, providing them the autonomy and decision. And all of this promoting this uh, healthy work life uh, balance. Uh, this can reduce the possibility of uh, having this uh, quite quick. And we can retain our talents, reduce this, this risk, and, and create a strongly motivated and high performance team. Well, thank you, very, thank you so much. Melis, did you want to add? It, like Maria almost said everything that I wanted to say, but maybe going back to our data, we can, um, I can confidently say that uh, there are two groups that you can, um, as project managers, have a specific look at because across all indicators like uh, well-being, positive emotions at work, uh, feeling like you've been offered a lot of um, chances at improving yourself, um, and um, and um, I mentioned well-being, um, positive emotions, uh, chances to improve yourself. Yes. Um, so in all of those indicators, unfortunately, two groups are uh, very much behind than the others, and those are women and the Gen Z groups. Um, they're they're saying they're not feeling great. They're saying that um, they're missing out on opportunities um, on on their career training options. Um, and they're, to be to be honest with you, in specifically psychological psychological safety aspects, as Maria also mentioned, they're lacking. So, if you um, if you want to improve the teams that you're working with, it might be better to start with them because they're rather the lower hanging fruit in this case. It looks like the data shows this, and you can start by talking to them and see where the um, problems are um, lying at the moment, if there are any. Thank you very much. That, yeah, that does make a lot of sense. Abdul, did you want to say yeah, something? Yeah, just wanted to add some points with uh, uh, Maria and Melissa mentioned. Yeah, one of the thing is uh, really what I experience is that nowadays uh, the organizational culture, it is playing a big role here. So more, more organizations are getting aware about it and uh, making a proper culture, organizational culture, because here uh, the aging or uh, different generations, uh, different skill set, all of this coming in and virtual, physical teams, all of this. So the culture is going to play a vital role here. So that's a, the one of the thing it's getting uh, so much talking across the organizations and the teams uh, and uh, uh, the community is everywhere. So that is that is one factor of it. The other one is uh, in after the pandemic, seeing that uh, uh, there, there is a focus shift is in terms of uh, the the well-being part, the physical part of it. People is more focusing about it. Earlier, yeah, more focus was in the um, financial side of it. Now more in uh, need a time with the family, spend a time for the uh, entertainment spend time for uh, with friends so health all of this is started considering it not just only the money fulfill it or the career ladder fulfill it there are other bigger element the other side the time for the entertainment time for the physical fitness health part of it time with the family time for the children or all of this is coming into the picture so this this is what uh, giving more, more participation. Even now, organizations are uh, organizing uh, the well-being things for the employees, as, uh, as Melissa mentioned in that. So earlier, it is not considered. It's only a work considered. It. So more expansion or adoption is coming in that well-being of the employees. Yes. I believe balance, that's a, a nice key term that everybody should follow is balance along with uh, Dr. Prasad's acronym of love. Uh, Shahab, I would like to turn it to you uh, from, from the questions. How does one reassemble, manage, and motivate a team when one or more members quietly quits? 
thank you. So what I do, uh, let me focus on that, that part. So uh, I, I actually manage, manage the developer team, the IT team, uh, the telephony team, things like that. So what I do is that I have learned from uh, some of my mentors as well uh, on different trains and different tracks as well. So I send them uh, small parts of knowledge base uh, approximately on daily basis. So what they feel about those things that they need to understand or they need to get engaged into those uh, uh, say knowledge base, some of the things that has uh, some one to one meetings, and there are definitely uh, some other things as well. Like you have to have uh, a team bonding uh, workouts, uh, workshops, or some say that even for get out for a coffee as well. So we discuss things that 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 are not actually fitting in. Uh, how to uh, re-engage some of the people who are actually falling short. So definitely training is, a, is the way uh, to uh, make, their, make them uh, get ready for the new world and things that they need to deliver as well. So in some cases, I have found out that uh, Little works and too much works both actually uh, make these people let go of things. Uh, they, just, they just uh, fall back. Uh, they just uh, don't feel like uh, to engage uh, in this in, in some engage in some activities, some tasks. Uh, okay, these guys are actually doing it. I'll let them do the whole thing. I'll look into it later on. And finally, what happens that later on never comes, right? When the reporting, say like uh, we're doing projects on an hourly basis right now. So everywhere it's hourly basis. So if you like, uh, say you want to build a bridge or something like, like that, you uh, lay out all the hourly, hourly people uh, that is required, say 1 million hours is required. So what are the skill set that needs to be plugged in? So some of the people are then gets actually chosen. So this guy is good at that. This guy is good at, good at this part. So on that part, so these guys uh, who are not actually engaging on the discussions and things of this sort, they're left behind. So on, so what you do uh, is to improve those engagement is having one-to-one -one meeting. So give them some options that, what are the ways that I can help you out? Number one, what are the tools you need to uh, get up to speed? You need training, uh, you need documentations, you need tools or something like that. So figure out what is the, what is the root cause that these guys are actually uh, pulling them out of the uh, whole engagement. So they want to go for a bigger pays, higher pays, or there are scopes that he's actually uh, uh, trying to get to. Uh, some say uh, higher training, higher educations as well. So if those things are actually their part of the understanding that if those things are actually offered to me, uh, I will get re-engaged, that actually never works, right? So. Mm. It's our nature that, okay, of whenever we actually get used to used to things, we want more, right? So that always happens. So more never ends, but we need to uh, engage ourselves in different discussions. And uh, as you say, uh, as Dr. Prashad also said that we need to uh, upskill uh, what we do. Uh, how to do it better in our own domain. And there is no escape. There is no shortcut way to uh, jump into from A to C. You have to touch the number point B as well. And if you, uh, and there is a big gap as well. So choose your mentor 
definitely choose a good mentor uh, who would actually give you a pathway. Either uh, you want to uh, walk in it or you want to run in it. That's up to you. That will be that person's call. Uh, all, li all the lights are lit. If you want to uh, definitely go for it, uh, it will be an added advantage for you. So preventing on the disengagement uh, is the cue that we don't want to lose uh, any people. Uh, skills are scarce. Uh, right skills are even more scarce. So it doesn't come by easily. Uh, if a vacuum is uh, already created and you can see that these things are coming in, you need to uh, address this early. So, <coughs> excuse me. So you need when you address this use, uh, early, people get uh, understanding that okay, I'm getting uh, value in the in this perspective. So then there you go. So make friends, make these people feel like they're valued uh, in whatever they're doing and make them uh, improve the, their abilities gradually. So it's not a easy path. So the learning curve has to be followed. Uh, this precise uh, skills metrics needs to be understand. Uh, the capability metrics of the people uh, needs to be mapped out. There is an institute called IVI Institute. They maps uh, all the capability metrics and frameworks. So there is a human framework as well. So learn some things on, uh, from those things, spread some uh, breadcrumbs to these guys to get those uh, things done. So because at the end of the day, we will be working as a team as well. It's not going to be happening like, uh, it's, a, it's not going to be a one man army. It, it never is. Always is a team. <laughs> yeah. Always is a team. Thank yes. you. Back to you. Thank you, Shahab. I appreciate your insights on that. Uh, we have time for one more question, and I'm going to direct it to Millis. Uh, lack of engagement seems to be one of the clues of quiet quitting. What are some of the best practices to improve engagement? So that, again, doesn't have an easy answer, but I'll try to give some examples this time, Christopher. So um, engagement is usually re related, and it's a huge topic, right? It's usually re related to employee experience and well-being. So um, in different sectors, this math will differ, right? Um, so if you're in healthcare, for example, that sector needs an overhaul today because like you're working long shifts, long hours under so much stress. So in that equation, you will have the perfect EX, right? Perfect, perfect employee experience. Like when an employee comes in, they know exactly what they're doing. They get a lot of training. Um, they're like, um, they're, you know, they get a lot of like they're engaged to their work because they believe in the purpose of their work. That's why they got into it in the first place. But they have very, very low well-being from the beginning. So it's a different uh, math, I would say, for every single sector that you are looking at. But if we're going to say like we're going to look at engagement and what are the components of it, and we're going to put it into pieces, the easiest answer would be look at. And our model also shows this um, in terms of engagement for this year specifically. So it's really related to psychological safety. So how do you get a psychological safe team? Um, again, we talked about a lot of uh, like having vulnerable talks around tables, you know, like um, bringing the discussion around. So like one, two, we talked about skills development. Skills development is huge, very, very much related to employee engagement. Create those options for your teams. And then it comes to positive emotions at work. So um, how do you create those um, positive emotions at work? And um, I'll give you a couple of examples to um, make this discussion more interesting. So um, you can have, so well-being is related to eight different areas under um, the roof of well-being. So one thing we've seen, for example, with developers. So we, we've had, we have this one client with 2,000 developers. And during, during and after COVID, they're now fully remote and nobody sees each other except on huddles on Slack. And um, basically what they've done is they've tried out one thing, right? Like what if we connected through challenges, through a step challenge, it's as easy as that, Christopher, what would happen then? And we looked at the sentiment, the sentiment skyrocketed uh, among the team, positive emotions skyrocketed among the team when they did this very simple small step of, um, 
doing these step challenges, right? Uh, I know it's very banal uh, and like it, it yeah. might sound very like easy to do, but like it's exactly what it did. So social connections really help people foster those positive emotions at work. Another another one. Call we have a call center client. Oh, John, I'm sorry. I'm I'm being told that we're running out of time. Uh, I appreciate oh. your insights. And if anybody would love to get more from Ellis, please contact her directly. And yes. I met. You have such an amazing insight as to what what needs to take place here. I want to thank all of our panelists, Dr. Prasad, Milis, Maria Katia, Abdul, Shahab. Thank you so much for spending your uh, time with us and your experiences. And I'm going to pass it back to Priya. Thank you, Priya. Thank you very much, Chris. And that was a great moderation as well. Thank you for doing such a wonderful job. And all panelists, definitely a great job. Now let us hear what we have learned today from Greg, uh, who's going to wrap up this entire event with the key points that he has captured today. Thank you, Priya. Wow, it was fantastic. I would love to talk more about the subject in greater detail, honestly, uh, after uh, hearing from all the panelists today. Uh, I think uh, to wrap this up, there's a couple of things I'd like to do. I think biggest thing that came through really is culture, that was the biggest uh, aspect in terms of trying to prevent and uh, uh, the quiet quitting and to help with uh, thriving for sure. Uh, so I think the, the key things that we can go back to is we started with Dr. Prasad. I'd like to go through the, the love again, the leadership, the open-mindedness, the value for both the organization and the team members, and then the empathy. So the listening and being supportive as being uh, key cultural aspects. The other things I'd like to go into is what were the actual uh, ideas to put in place, to actually do? And so probably the biggest thing I heard today over and over again was one on ones. You have to connect uh, with your team members. Uh, I think every single person uh, gave that as an answer as to uh, how to help um, members be engaged is the one on one when somebody's uh, perhaps not thriving. Uh, another key item I liked a lot was um, to uh, if you need help is to ask. So uh, Shahab uh, mentioned to uh, if you see someone else that's thriving and you don't feel like you're thriving, that engage with those people that are thriving. Learn from them. I thought that was fantastic. Uh, ask a question. Uh, be with those people. See how they do things. See how they communicate see how they receive uh, and how they thrive. And that should help you thrive. Uh, kind of an aside, right? You're, you're kind of uh, the product of the five people you spend the most time with. Uh, I don't know if you've heard that before, but uh, that kind of rang true with that uh, comment. Um, let's see. Uh, the other ideas that uh, came through and actually uh, uh, Mellis uh, really summarized those up pretty nicely, I thought at the end as well, is the psychological safety for your team uh, to have those one-on-one -on -one vulnerable talks. I thought that was a very interesting uh, term to use, the vulnerability. Training was the other huge aspect. Folks feel valued, I think, when they have that training and it helps them go from uh, to, to gain those uh, additional skills. And, um, and then the, uh, I love the small step challenge, the, uh, you know, taking steps, the step challenge to get uh, folks engaged, not necessarily with work, but uh, socially, socially get engaged with each other. Uh, I thought that was um, a big one as well. So, um, oh, the other thing was, Folks can become disengaged when they have too little work or when they have too much work. 
So that work-life balance. I think that's how I'll end it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Greg. And uh, now we are coming to the end of the event. And before we wrap up, this was the participation today. And thank you everyone for taking the poll and letting us know from where you have joined in. And you know, uh, this is this is overwhelming. And thank you so much for your support for this initiative. And uh, you, I have already put in the PDU code in the chat window, and it is there on your screen as well. You will get a PTU mailer by Monday, so you can with all the details. So no worries if you cannot capture the code right now. And if you would like to hear more on such interesting topics and any other topic, do take the feedback. I have put the feedback link also on the chat window. You can scan the QR code to take the feedback as well. Uh, and last but not the least, would like to thank all our team members who have worked together to put this amazing event together. Sunil, uh, who has been our WebEx admin and you know ensuring that everyone gets the right link at the right time. And uh, Dhamike, our chapter leader from Sri Lanka, who has created these wonderful flyers. And Priscilla for event analysis and ensuring that we have the right targeting marketing to ensure registrations and attendance for this event. PDU code, again on your screen, you will get a mailer by Monday with all the details and you can take the, uh, you know, you can claim your PTU. And with this, I think we will wrap up. Thank you for joining. And, uh, you know, uh, we will be back again next month. And this time we will be talking about what is your world of wow? That is world of work. Is it the metaverse? So we're going to talk about metaverse and project management, how this is going to impact us. So don't uh, forget to join us. Keep watching our social media handles for more. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and see you soon. Bye-bye.